Welcome back to the Morales channel, everyone. My name is Philip, and in this video, we're going to talk about what an ERC20 token is. And we're going to focus on this from a few different angles. We're going to talk about generally what the, what the ERC comes from, what it means, and, and then what an ERC20 token can be used for. And then we'll go into the technicals of what it actually is under the hood. Uh, because uh, there are a fixed specification exactly what an ERC20 token must contain. And we'll get into this later. Uh, but first of all, many of you have probably heard it for the first time when investing or when looking at tokens on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. And you've, you've heard this term in social media, in videos, ERC20 tokens. And uh, I'm sure you've wondered, what is this token standard? Why do we have a token standard at all? So after this video, you're going to know all about it. So. First of all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the cha channel and hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content. Uh, so let's begin by talking about what an ERC20 token can be used for. And the answer to that is almost anything. An ERC20 token is a representation of some sort of asset on the Ethereum blockchain. And a token, and an ERC20 token, can represent a lot. It could represent a currency like, you know, yeah, a cryptocurrency or a currency like the US dollar or the euro, or maybe it can represent an ounce of gold. It could represent shares in a company. Uh, it could represent points in some sort of reward system or in a game. Uh, it, could, uh, it could be some sort of uh, casino token, maybe a poker chip. It can represent any kind of asset um, that you want. It could represent some square meters in a house, real estate, whatever it might be. And that is really what has made Ethereum popular, the fact that you can tokenize assets on the blockchain in that way. What is the point of having a token standard? Because ERC20 is a token standard, right? Why do we need that instead of just everyone that wants to create a token? Why can't they just program the token the way they want? And don't worry about this ERC20 standard, because it is a technical standard, as we'll get into later on in this video. And the reason why you want a technical standard, a token standard, is when you want to build out a network where you have many different you know, companies or institutions, websites, and users that are going to utilize the same token and integrate it with that token, you want an ecosystem where this integration is standardized. So let's take an example, right? Um, all the uh, plugs in your house for electricity that you plug into the wall in your country at least, look the same. And why is that? Why don't just every manufacturer have a different plug? Well, because it would be too much work to integrate a specific plug into your house. You don't want to spend time integrating every sort of piece of machinery that you buy in your house. You want a standard so that when you build your house, you have the right outlets um, and that is standardized by some authority. And then every manufacturer they also build uh, plugs of the same standard so that you can plug them in no matter what manufacturer, no matter who creates it. That's the value of having a standard and that benefits everyone. Um, even though making a plug isn't hard, it's just two pieces of metal. Everyone can, could make their own. It's not difficult. Uh, so they don't need the standard because it's difficult to create the plug. They need it to build out an ecosystem that is powerful. And that's the same thing in the Ethereum world. So if you want an ecosystem, of wallets, of exchanges, of services, of DeFi, you want a common plug. You want a token standard that can be plugged into this ecosystem where the companies, the exchanges and so on don't have to spend time integrating every new token that comes out because the integration looks the same because the tokens have the same interface. They all share the same interface and that means that all tokens of the ERC20 standard they have the same functions. For example, if you want to transfer an ERC20 token, that function call to make a transfer looks exactly the same on the programming level. You specify who you want to send it to and the amount. And you have you know, the same function name, the same function parameters, the same order, and you expect the same result. So that's why an exchange, if you're building a new exchange or a wallet, you can just integrate into your wallet the ERC20 token. And then you now support 
all of the ERC20 tokens. Anyone can now use your exchange to deposit any ERC20 token because of this shared interface. And that's why we have the token standard. But just because it's an ERC20 token doesn't mean that it gives the token value. Because this uh, is confusing for some beginners out there. You know, what makes a token valuable? And it has nothing to do with the standard of the token. Uh, the value of the token comes solely from the valuation of the buyers, right? If you find it valuable, then it has a price. And that depends on what the token represents. If the token represents nothing, then maybe it's valuable if you have enough buyers, but most ERC20 tokens that represent nothing, just the token is not very valuable. But if they represent an ounce of gold, for example, then the price of the token would probably be similar to what an ounce of gold costs. So the value of the token is completely separate from this standard. It has all to do with the use case and any sort of backing or use case, or just in, in case of normal cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, they have this, um, they're, an, they're an investment in and of themselves, cryptocurrencies have become. But that's uh, more rare when it comes to tokens built on top of Ethereum. Now, let's look at this standard and also talk a bit about where the name comes from. Because you probably know that there are multiple token standards, like you have the ERC-1155. Uh, it's another token standard for NFTs. So where does all these numbers come from and what does ERC stand for? So let's have a look at this here. So here you can see the Ethereum uh, GitHub account and their EIP repository. And EIP stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. So here you can submit uh, requests uh, or ideas to improve Ethereum. And then there's this open discussion. People can submit their feedback. You can talk about it. And maybe, maybe, maybe your change, your proposal will be incorporated into Ethereum. And here someone submitted this EIP um, back in November of 2015. And... Uh, they named it ERC token standard. And the reason that this is number 20 is because this was the 20th Ethereum improvement proposal. So you can see here that issues is 476. So there are currently 476. Well, that's just open issues. You can see here is actually the number. So 3,585 is the current, uh, the latest Ethereum improvement proposal ID. And they increase, you know, one at a time. So there has been 3,585 in total. And this one, number 20, was the 20th uh, Ethereum improvement proposal. And that's where the name comes from later on, because this later on became the ERC-20 uh, token standard. And here, they started this discussion. Uh, this guy here, Froseman, wrote this uh, abstract, um, because they have to follow this uh, sort of Template. So the abstract is the following describes standard functions a token contract can implement. Those will allow dApps and wallets to handle tokens across multiple interfaces slash dApps. The most important here are transfer, balance off, and the transfer event. So they, these are two functions and this is a, an, an event. So then they come into the actual specification. And now here is some programming. So they specify exactly how should the different functions, uh, what should they look like, and with which functions need to be implemented in order for a token to be uh, compliant with the ERC-20 standard. Um, so you have balance off function, total supply, transfer, transfer from, approve, allowance. I'm not going to go through um, what all of these functions does, but some of them are pretty straightforward. And then you have a few events, well, one event, uh, no, two events. Uh, and after this, you can see that there now is a lively discussion uh, of people, uh, for example, here, one guy commented that decimals doesn't seem to be needed. So they're expressing their comments, their uh, concerns about this, and they try to come to an agreement. So they argue here back and forth, and there are hundreds and hundreds of comments here, uh, what they should include, what they shouldn't include, what they can add or what they can change. And here you can see 394 more comments. And then finally, they close this out after discussion, they come to some sort of agreement, and then you can see here, someone asked, is this closed? Yes, the final standard can be found here. Oh, they moved it. Let's see. Here it is. 
So then they uh, finalized this uh, proposal, uh, the discussion is over, and this now became ERC20. And ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Comment. And this is another category of Ethereum improvement proposals, basically. It's not a direct improvement of the Ethereum code, but it is something that improves the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, so that becomes an Ethereum request for comment. Uh, but here is just the same thing. They outline more detail what all of this is about, what the functions should include. Uh, so that's the specification. They must include things like the transfer function, the balance of function. And then there are some functions that are optional. So here, for example, the symbol is optional. Um, the decimals that this guy pointed out is unnecessary in his mind is optional. So you don't have to include it, but most people do. And there is no authority to grant your token sort of the stamp of ERC20. Instead, it's up to you to implement the interface and to make it compliant with the token standard because otherwise any exchange will not be able to integrate you. Any wallet will not be able to integrate you. So it's up to you to make sure that you follow the standard because otherwise your uh, token contract will not work as intended. And no one will want to integrate you. Uh, but then it's of course up to you to make sure that your code functions correctly. And that in some cases, in most cases it works, but some people of course, they code bugs into their contract, they're exploited, um, and there are a ton of problems from that, but that's just normal programming. Uh, so I think this covers it pretty well what an ERC20 token is and what it means under the hood. And this uh, was created in 2015 and has lived on ever since. You can see it created 2015, 11, 19. This standard is still used and it's used because, well, the network is and the, and the ecosystem is built out now. You have all of these plugs and all of these outlets um, that now are a network and where this ecosystem works very well. And they also did a good standard. The standard is good enough. You have the transfer and you have the balance, you have the approval. What more do you need in a token? So for a simple token, the ERC20 standard is still very good. They have made some additional improvements in new ERC standards that you can use if you want, but the ERC20 base standard is still the most common token standard out there. And that shows you that if you design things properly, they can live on for a very long time. I hope this helped you understand um, what an ERC20 token is. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And also let me know what other type of videos you want me to do on this channel. Uh, we could walk through some other tokens, maybe look at some NFT token standards. Uh, they came way later, uh, but they're also very interesting because they're distinctly different from this. So let me know what you want to see. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, of course. Let me know you enjoyed it and subscribe to the Morales channel. If you're interested in building smart contracts, building dApps, you need to check out morales.io. We make it easier than ever to build dApps. We accelerate the process going from idea to market. So make sure to check that out. Also check out our hackathon if you haven't yet. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.